in St. Matthews around 1115. If this circulation does hold together, the important thing is if you are in these tornado warnings, you need to find your safe space, an interior room that you can go to. Looking at future climate trends, we could see more widespread heavy rainfall events, which could lead to more flooding like we see here in Colombia. Sand dunes play a vital role when it comes to protecting our coastline. They're the first line of defense when it comes to storm surge and flooding. During this time of the year, the brightest star in our night sky, Sirius, would rise just after sunset. The Greeks thought that this really bright star would add to our daytime heat. But those brighter greens right there are some gusty winds in the order of 30 to 40 miles per hour. Rotation and a potential tornado. Frank then creates a path that the tornado is following, and the software creates a polygon on the map, showing where it is heading. The western side of a storm, you see less rain, and the winds are typically not as bad either. So we're on the better side of the system. Correlation coefficient, it lets us see things like debris in the air, and this is a clear tornado debris signature. This is Ulmer Olar uh, Govan. This concerning trend is highlighted by the fact that now out of the eight past years we've seen, each and every one is now in the eighth hottest years to ever occur. The National Hurricane Center has started to issue extended tropical weather outlooks. You have seen these maps before, but instead of being issued for two and five days out, they will now include a seven day forecast. A St. Matthews resident who has been sending in weather reports for 14 years from her backyard. I've been interested in the weather for a long time. We start to increase out of the south ahead of this line of showers and storms that looks to move through right now, late morning and into the midday. 64 degrees. That was our high temperature today in Columbia. That was at midnight, and that's where our average low is this time of the year. In fact, we actually set the record for the coldest May 27th on record here in Columbia. Also picking up right now 1.35 inches of rain. That's going to continue to increase a little bit as we go forward. Take a look across the southeast. There's 70s and 80s out towards our west here in the Carolinas and portions of eastern Georgia. 50s downright cold for this time of the year. And with the warming trends in our climate, our graphic here from the Climate Central team showing us that these conditions are two times less likely to even occur to begin with. So we are really in uncharted waters today with these temperatures that were in the 50s this afternoon. We were around 15 to 30 degrees cooler than where we should be this time of the year. But the good news is you're going to see a little bit warmer every day as you work towards your Memorial Day. And we're also looking at drier conditions as well. So let's take a look at what's going on. Low pressure just off the coast and this is slowly going to move onshore as we go into tonight bring us more unsettled weather with showers and some cold weather possible as we close out the rest of the weekend here. We do see a little bit drier weather I think as we go tomorrow afternoon through Monday. Tuesday we could see some more showers moving through the area so something we'll be keeping an eye on there. But for the next 24 hours off and on rain as we go throughout the rest of tonight that steady precipitation that we saw earlier is not going to be the case anymore but still breezy and temperatures not moving too much. We're at 60 degrees right around 2 a.m. on your Sunday morning as you go throughout the day temperatures likely staying in the 50s once again getting into the lower 60s I think in the afternoon and really after midday that rain chance is going to start to move well north of us. So a lot of us will be dealing with a lot of cloud cover for sure but at least that rain chance starting to slim down a little bit here. Maybe seeing some clearing out in the western midlands. We'll see some sunshine I think as we go into your Memorial Day itself. So tomorrow afternoon 61 degrees right around noon. We'll be sitting in the middle 60s as we get into the afternoon with cloudy conditions, but still overall on the chilly side for this time of the year. We're going to be stuck in the lower to middle 60s for most of us here across the Midlands. Let's take a look though at the rest of your weekend and your uh, holiday forecast going forward for your Sunday. We are seeing those off and on showers, 63 degrees, your high temperature, but a much warmer and nice 77 for your Memorial Day. Our average is still well above that, but it's going to feel pretty nice after these 50s we've been dealing with. I think we should be dry for the most part. Partly cloudy skies expected. We can't rule out a stray shower as you go into your Memorial Day. Your seven day forecast going forward a little bit warmer every day here. We're up to 81 on your Tuesday with a 30% chance of isolated showers and storms. We're in the lower to middle 80s as we head towards the middle of next week and an unsettled pattern going forward with temperatures in the middle 80s towards the end of next week. This is providing some interesting data on where the hottest parts of Columbia are. It's data that could improve urban planning in the city and our understanding of summer heat. News 19 meteorologist Corey Smith explains. 
We just received the results of an extensive heat mapping project in Colombia, led by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It told us one thing we already knew. It is hot in Colombia, but it's how the heat was distributed across the city which this new information reveals. John Quagliarello, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, says the urban heat island is a well-known feature of cities like Colombia. And so what we've always known is that in these urbanized areas, um, we have what we call an urban heat island effect that results in much warmer temperatures than it does in forested areas or areas that have a lot more shade. The main takeaways from the study were the huge difference in temperatures across Colombia. The 18.5 degree difference was one of the largest found in the country. Some parts of the city were even 7 degrees warmer than the official high recorded at the airport. You can see once we visualize this data where things are hotter and cooler, and it's not evenly distributed across Colombia. I'm in the Highland Park neighborhood, just north of 277 in Colombia. And as it turns out, this is one of the coolest places you could be on a hot summer day in the capital city. The reason for this becomes pretty apparent as soon as you start to take a look around. The trees provide plenty of shade on the hottest of days, keeping temperatures down. This paired with the grass-covered neighborhoods results in some of the coolest weather in the study. Let's now jump to one of the hotter areas of Columbia based off of the research. We're near downtown right along Bull Street and a very different view from that forested neighborhood we were just in. There's not a lot of trees, but what there is a lot of are buildings, concrete, and asphalt. These materials are great at trapping heat and lead to much more heat, especially on summer days. An expanded view of the Columbia Metro shows where we have the highest concentration of these materials. Typically, where we see larger populations and major roads, we see materials which, proven by this study, will result in higher temperatures. This is important to realize as it could impact how heat warnings are handled, especially in the future those more urbanized areas where we see these, these much higher temperatures, we really need to hit the message harder for those people, letting them know the risks that the heat poses so they can take the proper precautions to, to protect themselves from the extreme heat. From Columbia, I'm News 19 meteorologist Corey Smith. I don't know, it's just, you know, to me it's always hot in the summertime around here. That's the reason why we're famously hot. <laughs> sometimes it can be hot in the wintertime, but not right now. No, not at all. No. And as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving Day, I know a lot of people are going to be concerned about the forecast.